<laughs> Welcome. Hey, Thank Randy. you. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. Welcome, everybody, to World Drum Club. I'm here with my colleague Randy Gloss, uh, professor at Cal Arts here in Southern California. I'm Kalani. I want to welcome you to another video. So we're exploring the frame drum. And, uh, you know, frame drum is this. Yeah, I mean, in, in one way, it is a very generic term. And I think the term frame drum, right, it's in the name, frame drum. Mm -hmm. But any time that the, it's a single, typically a single headed drum, where the, the depth of the shell is less than the head diameter, technically they can call a frame drum. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing is almost every culture, if not every culture in the world, has some type of frame drum. Yeah, it's a, uh, a style of drum that's fairly, fairly easy to make, you know. Um, Lots of hist history behind different kinds of frame drums. What is this particular model? People probably want to know what we're playing here. Yeah, this is a, a Cooperman 18-inch um, tar drum is what they would uh, market it and sell it in their website. Mm -hmm. as. And this is the tunable model. This is tunable, yeah. It has uh, Allen wrench tuners in the in the back of the, the drum head there. Great. And is that the, that's the Renaissance head? Is that Re right? Remo Renaissance, yep. Okay. Yeah. Are they still making drums with the Renaissance head? Somebody said that that they're I think not so, but it's harder to get these now, or maybe I know that just you know trends change, and it seems that you know when they find a new material that some people like, all of a sudden everyone jumps on the bandwagon. I think in any instrument, that's mm -hmm. kind of the way, right? Whether it's drum set or yeah, in this case, frame that's, drums. That's true. So what I see now, people are using a lot of this kind of black suede, which is a basically oh. it's a, the Remo head just kind of flipped around, but mm. it's a, a black kind of ebony. Head. Oh, okay. And that's become very popular because it's very kind of rich with a lot of overtones and harmonics, and it has a lot of bendy kind of qualities mm. to it, mm. which is why I kind of like this this material as well. Mm. All right. Yeah. So you're playing in a particular style that is, I guess we'd say, maybe a, a more modern style, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, people call it usually the free hand or free style. I think that either one mm -hmm. kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Free hand in the sense that my hands are free. You know, most traditionally, you see a lot of people playing frame drum this way throughout mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. um, but there's nothing free about my hands because they're attached to the shell. Right. And so this position kind of unlocks other types of drumming. Mm -hmm. If I want to bring whatever I know about drumming, if I say, oh, okay, I've been practicing some, some conga ideas, I can start to put that out. Oh, I play some djembe. Mm -hmm. Oh, I play jazz brushes. We can automatically start to apply whatever we do. And so this idea that it's freehand, but I also like this idea of freestyle. And we were talking about this idea of making things your own. Mm -hmm. When I'm not bound to a tradition, I'm not playing in an Arabic style or Persian style, uh, an Uzbeki style or whatever mm -hmm. style, or Turkish style, I'm playing in my own style. So this kind of really, it lends itself to kind of finding your own way with it. Yeah, yeah, good. Could you just run down a few of the techniques you're using? Because, you know, I, yeah. I know in the intro, you're moving fast. So, yeah, I mean, what are you doing? So I'll, I'm going to break it down from big mallet to small mallet. Mm -hmm. How's that? First thing that I think about always with an instrument is one mallet per hand. Mm -hmm. So full hand. If I'm playing, on, especially on a frame drum that is so resonant mm -hmm. and so there's so much um, overtones in there, if everything is open, it becomes kind of a monotonous, a little homogenized as far as the sound. Mm -hmm. But the moment I add contrast, if I have open play closed, right there is a, is a departing point. So right there, I would say pick up a frame drum with just two sounds. Mm. Now I'm moving my hand further in, I get a fuller sound. Just playing with two colors, mm -hmm. open, closed. Mm -hmm. It's just like, all right, let me start with black and white and start yep. to draw. Yep, yep, okay. awesome. Great From advice. there, I'm gonna move into splitting my hand up. So instead of one drumstick or one mallet per hand, like on my tabla, I was splitting into two. And so now I'm using three fingers and one finger. And I can play as single strokes, alternating. Double strokes. Mm. And all of those can be open or closed. Mm -hmm. Meaning if I play and 
start to improvise with that. Mm. And again, moving my hands in different because everywhere I hit the drum, right. it's pulling out a different tone. A different. Even, Let your hands dance around, <laughs> see what you can kind of find. Right? Great. Yeah. So that's two mallets. Then I'm going to split even further into three mallets. Now I'm going to use my ring finger, my middle finger, and first. So ring, middle, first. That's right. And just starting with this idea of those three fingers and getting used to just the mechanics. Mm -hmm. And I'm putting a little bit of weight so I can feel the beginning of each of those. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now if I get the other hand. And the moment I separate, three will become six, meaning... Take that idea, and right now I'm playing into all the edge. My open sounds. Mm. Closed sounds. In the center. Mm -hmm. So again, start to explore the instrument. Nice. And then yeah. I can make different patterns. So there's a six note pattern with three fingers. Or I can go three, two, one, back to the middle finger mm -hmm. for four notes. Mm -hmm. And then I can start piecing those together. So putting the, the three and then the four, mm -hmm. now I have a seven. Seven, eight. Mm -hmm. And start to explore. But right there, you see what I'm doing? Logically, step by step, adding one more yeah. at a time. Yeah. Then from there, the last technique that I was doing is now using all my fingers. Mm. And I'm using this in a very loose way. This is like a Persian, like yeah. SRA and Rees. Uh -huh. This idea that I'm just, when I'm dropping, like a brush, letting all the bristles hit in their own way. Mm. So now when I, my hand comes down, rather than being one sound, at that moment, one, two, three, four, but not in a mm. controlled way from the knuckle, but just drop it. Just almost very relaxed. Very, so relaxed. Do that, again. Start, yeah. Do that again. And you can just start to get some rolling sound. And Beautiful. if I take that idea, it's so full, but you see, my hands aren't moving any faster than this. from there the only other technique that I was messing with was playing with these harmonics because there's so much uh, yeah. content of pitch that's possible everywhere I touch the drum mm -hmm. so if I just strike the drum open at the edge I got one sound the moment I draw an imaginary uh, line through that center of the mm -hmm. drum mm -hmm. and cut it off mm -hmm. and then I start to move now I pull out different pitches so I can have literally scales and arpeggios mm. a little bit more open sound or nice. more kind of clothes and staccato. <laughs> and you could play glissando, where I bend the note either right away or taking your time. Yeah. I could play vibrato. Uh huh, right. So, wow. yeah, all of these different kind of colors to mess with. On a frame drum. Yeah. And uh, every part works. You know, even if I just have an itch and I scratch it. Right. You've so got even fingernails. Just, yeah. So all of it's viable. So the best thing that I tell people is this is a blank canvas, go paint. Mm -hmm. Right? And you <laughs> right. said before, what an ancient instrument. How many paintings? How many stories? Yeah. How many rhythms? How many approaches? How many techniques? You're talking about an instrument that is prehistory in so many ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, you find references to it in the Old Testament. You find mm -hmm. references to it in uh, different, like, mosaics and things like that of ancient Roman Greece right. and things like that. I mean, relatively unchanged for thousands of years. How many people have told their stories in so many ways? Mm, yeah, you think about how this drum has uh, affected people's lives, you know, in different areas of their lives throughout yeah. history with the, with the people that play it. Um, reminds me of Lane Redmond's book, When the Drummers Were Women. Uh, great book, if you want to look at that. It's in Women's Studies. Um, and that's an, an excellent guide through that journey to yeah. start to see, like, how important from birth of civilization till now frame drum has kind of been tied in in yeah. so many societies yeah. and this idea of that you know we were talking before in the other video about just gender roles right right and the fact that yes that that this historically in many parts of the world originally was a female 
gendered instrument in that mm-hmm, way. Mm-hmm. And now it's ro- re- 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 roles are reversed in the other way, right? Mm-hmm. So, And played with the hands. And, and the frame drum is a very intimate in- instrument. And also, just coincidentally, is the shape of our universal symbol for women, for female, which is a circle. Check the bathroom doors. Um, it's, it's kind of like an implication there, right? And a lot of people will talk about the moon and or the the you know the circle representing the womb, uh, birth, all sorts of symbology symbolism uh, involved with that. And even just I mean at a at a at a more kind of pragmatic level, mm-hmm. the duality, the dichotomy of of in one hand that it it does have every culture in some way, every technique, every story, but it couldn't be more simple. Mm-hmm. You're talking about a hoop and a skin. Yeah. The most simple drum construction there is. Yeah. But how rich, how diverse, both repertoire, history, culturally, etc. So what would be the size range, if somebody wanted to play in this style and they wanted to get a drum for this style, what would be the size, what would they look for? I think that is your first frame drum something in the in the 16 inch realm is usually a good safe bet mm-hmm. because with that size I can I can play it here comfortably mm-hmm. if I want to I can shift to this position comfortably mm-hmm. and if I want to start learning more about the traditional techniques I can play in this position comfortably mm-hmm. the larger frame drum the 20 22 those sizes sound beautiful in this position and they're great but then it becomes a little problematic when we try to play in this position mm-hmm. or sometimes when they're too big I hear people oh this hurts my shoulder yeah. so I think starting with a medium sized drum first so 16, like 16 18 this is 18 this is 18 okay. yeah that's yeah. kind of a good, even if sometimes 14 can be great because mm-hmm. it's good, good for all the positions and 14 fits nice in a snare drum in a, stand. Obviously, yeah, snare drum And stand. so it's a very yeah. versatile thing. And then what I do is I ripple out from there. Uh-huh. If I say, okay, I'm going to start with a medium-sized drum, right. 14, 16, 18, somewhere in that middle mm-hmm. range. Then my next purchase is either going to be that larger drum to get that deep, rich sound right. or something that's going to be really a cracking kind of sound, the higher thing that I can play Rider. in this position. Mm-hmm. And just to mention that, if you guys um, are not familiar with it, I know many of you are, but if you're not familiar with uh, hardware, we're talking about, we mentioned a snare stand. Um, so you could get a 14. Uh, there, I know there's some companies that make extensions oh, yeah. for the snare stand, so you can get up to 18 or even 20-inch drums. If you don't want to hold it with your legs or you can't hold it with your legs for some reason or you just don't want to hold it with your legs, um, you can place it on a stand and... and um, John Bergamo, the gentleman we were talking about in, the, in the, another video, uh, has a, had a lot of uh, performances and videos where he's playing a drum just like this or pretty close to this yeah, John, in a stand. He always right? played in this position and always in a stand. You know, John had uh, hip replacements, knee replacements. Uh, I mean, he was okay. definitely had some physical challenges yeah. in that way. And yeah. it was strenuous to hold the drum for him. Uh-huh. What he would always do was play the larger drum and rest it on his uh-huh. feet this way. You couldn't uh-huh. do it with this size. You need a bigger drum. Okay. But he would literally just use his legs as the stand oh, and play okay. it in this way because he felt like he could do this, but after a while it would start to bother his yeah. hips and his knees. Yeah. And... He'd just rather not do that for, right. for those reasons. But he preferred to play frame drums in this position because he felt it was the easiest way to let out all of his ideas. Yeah, Whether it's, it's very ergonomic. Whether it's from tabla or from congas or from drum set, he felt like this matched everything else that he did, right. where this felt far into him and this felt even more far into him. Yeah, that this style, that's a whole nother situation. That's a, that's a whole nother uh, weeks and months in the woodshed, as we say, you know. That but it unlocks, that. you know, what I found is I, when I teach my students, we always do three positions. Mm-hmm. I teach them this position, at the same time, we learn some of this position and at the same time, this position. Because I really feel that for certain techniques, for certain, even evoking a certain kind of spirit of the instrument, mm-hmm. it changes its character. When yep, it's here, for sure. it, it could be my conga, my djembe, my cajon. It feels like that. Mm-hmm. The moment that it's here and I start to play these ideas, it feels more like I'm playing almost like a guitar or strumming something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then when I'm playing in this position, now it allows me the opportunity to stand, to walk, right. to dance, to do whatever else I want because the drum comes with me no matter where I'm going. And the drum actually becomes more resonant because it has the least amount of contact right, points. Right, right. It so does here, change the resonance a lot. This is one sound, and the moment that I put it here, it's so much brighter and, and livelier of a sound. And right. so each position kind of unlocks a certain color, a certain approach. Maybe you ought to try doing a video, though, or you could do a performance where you're 
positioning like this, but you actually walk on stage like that. Yeah, walk, very graceful. Do the drum walk. Yeah, graceful movement. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, look, we'll look for that video. Hey, Randy, we're going we're gonna to do a couple other videos in those other st holding styles, just brief introduction. So if you guys want, you can look for those. Thanks again uh, for doing this. Pleasure. Randygloss.com. Check them out. Uh, CalArts in, here in Southern California. Randy's a professor there teaching there. Uh, world, world drumming, world music. Um, they have some great. Do you guys have performance videos on the website? I was on the website and I didn't see any, but maybe yeah, there's I an archive. It. There's a link to an archive because they live stream all of ah. the recital hall performances and archive our world music festival. Oh, amazing! And so there's a link on calarts.edu. I'm not sure exactly what, but if you email me, I'll try to find it and I can send it to you. But if you just explore calarts.edu and you go to the music school page, there will be a, a link to live performances and an archive of recorded performances. Awesome. That's amazing. So Randy at randygloss.com mm -hmm. and... Rgloss at calarts.edu. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, man. My pleasure. <laughs>